where I'm standing is possibly the most exposed point in the Bristol Channel. I'm on Breen Down, a nature reserve which juts out into the water here in North Somerset. Over to my right is Bridgewater Bay with the town of Burnham-on-Sea and the estuaries of the River Parrot and the River Brew. Over there is Western Supermare and beyond Western Supermare we have Clevedon, beyond Clevedon we have Portishead, beyond Portishead we have Avonmouth and then we have the mouth of the River Severn and the mouth of the River Wye, both tidal rivers which flow freely here into the Bristol Channel. But for how long? With Oldbury and Hinkley Point power stations and until recently Barclay, the estuary is already a big name as far as the country's energy needs are concerned. However, directly behind me is Lavernock Point on the Welsh coast, which if linked to here by a 10-mile barrage, could mean this area becoming the country's number one energy resource. Experts predict that the uniquely high rise and fall of the tide, up to 15 metres in mid-channel, could provide about 6% of the United Kingdom's electricity needs. But what else could this mean to the area? Many people have many questions. How much tide are we going to have here? Now normally we know how much tide we're going to have here. If his tide's 25 foot, I know he's going to be just upon them stones down there. But if they start holding the tide back with all these things, how much water is going to come through? And how much is it going to ebb out? We could end up with a big sewer pond out here, mind. Well, the most important thing we're going to lose is the famous Severn Boar. Something thousands of people come to watch every few months. They flock to this area of the Severn just to see this big wave come racing up the Severn. That's going to be killed and that's going to be so, so sad. It's those two big questions. Uh, what, what effect is it going to have on our immediate environment and on any additional environmental impacts that are likely to arise in the future from it? And what are the other options that are being considered around the country? How does it stack up with other renewable options and in particular use of the marine environment for energy generation? To get some idea of the consequences of building the Severn Barrage, I'm visiting the Rance Estuary. Well, here spanning the water between the port of Saint Malo and the resort town of Dinard in Brittany, France, is the Usine Mer Motrice de la Rance, which less romantically translates as the tidal power plant over the rancid one. Built in the 60s as a prototype for what now appears to be a defunct bigger project across the wider bay of Mont-Saint-Michel, the Barrage de la Rance in effect has created its own environments, both in natural and human terms. Jacques Collat is the president of the Association of the Combined Users Committees on the Rance. One advantage is the barrage brings everybody together. The mayor, those elected to represent the population and the river's users. Everyone around the river comes together because of the barrage. At only 750 metres long and only about half of that length producing electricity, the barrage supplies approximately 3% of Brittany's energy needs. Cyril Le Perrier is a director of Electricité de Français, or EDF Energy, the company which runs the power plant and a visitor centre which explains what goes on beneath the waves. The tidal power is working like every hydroelectric plant by the difference of level um, from one reservoir to another, another one reservoir. The difference is that we use um, the tidal to um, fill up uh, the reservoir and then when the tide is down uh, we can uh, make uh, electricity by the difference of level. The Rance Barrage has now been operating for 40 years and the environments it's created may hold clues, lessons and arguments for those both for and against the Seven Barrage. In part two, I'll be looking at the ways in which the Mont Saint-Michel Bay and the Rance Estuary compares in its makeup to the Bristol Channel and the Seven Estuary.